Hi, this is Craig Dodge with Prolike here, and I'm getting ready to do some more uh, product review videos, but I thought I might take a quick break and do a different kind of video for you. I was asked recently to talk about where I thought um, the uh, future of the outdoor industry was going in terms of product technology and how products were purchased. And uh, I thought I'd just share some of those thoughts with you. You know, hopefully you find it interesting. If not, skip the video and just go back to my gear videos. Um, there's two things that I think are going to govern the future of the outdoor industry. One is the law of accelerating change, and the other is one of the immutable laws of markets, and that is that markets seek efficiency. So let's talk about those in the context of the outdoor industry, and you know they actually apply to you know pretty much any consumer product space. Um, the first is the law of accelerating change, and that covers how fast. Uh, technologies get adopted in the marketplace is the way that I, I prefer to think about it. And if you go back to thinking about like the printing press, um, it took 400 years for the printing press to uh, uh, get adopted. It took the cell phone seven years. And I think if you think about different aspects of technology um, and just how rapidly the technical uh, landscape is changing and uh, how things are getting, you know, the acceleration of how quickly uh, the landscape is changing. Yeah, you know, if you want to go all the way back through history, you can look at the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, the the Iron Age, the Industrial Revolution, the Information Age, etc. Um, so think of it this way: 15 years ago, from the point that I'm making this video, search engines didn't exist. Less than 10 years ago, YouTube, which you're going to be watching this video on, didn't exist, and we're seeing those changes um, accelerating. My background is in the uh, computer software industry. Prior to founding. Uh, like here in 2003, I really didn't have any background in the outdoor industry or in the textile industry other than being born and raised in Montana and uh, actively participating in a lot of these outdoor activities and having a garage full of gear and a closet full of gear. Um, but I started building websites for companies in the outdoor industry. I built them for some names like Icebreaker and Sims and Outdoor Research and some of the better known uh, uh, publications in the outdoor industry. And I started seeing these adoption cycles, these uh, technology adoption cycles that I was familiar with in the technology space. Um, the first being, I heard about a little company up in uh, Canada called Integral Designs that was going to bring a new, uh, a new uh, uh, membrane, waterproof breathable membrane to market called Event. And I saw a market opportunity to build a, an e-commerce business like, like Prolight Gear and be the first to bring that membrane to the uh, U.S. market, which we did. Um, and that was pretty incredible. We uh, sold those event jackets as fast as Integral Designs could make them. And we, we followed that up by jumping on some early adoption cycles, like uh, Marina Wool as a base layer. We were one of the first to really get behind that. We were one of the launch partners for uh, PolarTech NeoShell, which you know, was arguably the next iteration of... Uh, of uh, improvements in air permeability for waterproof breathable membranes. Um, and all those cycles are happening faster and faster. Where I see this going is that if you look at historically fabrics um, are either woven or knit. And if you think about knit, um, a knit fabric is where you take a single strand of yarn and using some you know, mechanical process, you're, you're creating a series of interconnected loops. Um, and then knitting, or sorry, a, a weave is where you're taking multiple strands of individual yarns and you're overlapping them. Sometimes in a one by one grid, sometimes you're going to do, you know, three strands in one direction for every one strand in the other direction. Um, and they have certain mechanical performance advantages inherent with the two techniques to create a uh, fabric. What's really going to change that is 3D printing. And you're just limited in the way that you can construct fabrics using a traditional knit or, or woven process that are eliminated by 3D printing. And I'll, I'll put up some images I found on the internet that show some different examples of how you're going to be able to architect a fabric in the near future that uh, gives you significant advantages. Oh, shoot. So anyway, you're going to be able to architect a fabric and engineer a fabric that uh, has performance capabilities far beyond anything that's currently available using traditional woven or knitting processes. Um, and also I think that's going to impact uh, uh, like the way insulation works. Right now nothing comes close to natural down in terms of its warmth to weight ratio 
its compressibility and its resiliency to being compressed. But I believe in the very near future we're going to be able to use 3D printing technology to um, engineer a plume, a synthetic plume that's going to be lighter weight than down, more compressible than down, and more resilient to being compressed than down is. And in the process, it'll be um, you know, uh, resistant to water vapor or moisture, which right now we're trying to have to come up with concepts to uh, treat down plumes to make them water resistant. Uh, so I think that's going to be a big change. And it leads into this next area where I think the outdoor industry is really going to be rapidly changed in the near future. Um, and that is the concept that uh, markets seek efficiency. And I think the outdoor industry is one of the most horribly inefficient industries uh, available today. The way it currently works is sales reps you know, travel to the different uh, dealers with their dealer workbooks. And you know, oftentimes they're just line drawings in a printed uh, catalog. And they say, you know, here's what we're going to bring to market next year. And so we have to kind of uh, guess where the industry is going to be or where the economy is going to be, where consumer sentiment is going to be 12 months in advance, kind of guess how well we're going to sell the current generation of products, you know, in the future and write up these orders, the, the brands and take these orders, assemble them all together go over to Asia and try and slot time in these major manufacturing factories to get the products produced. The products are then loaded in a uh, cargo container on a cargo ship, shipped across the ocean, landed on some port in the U.S., trucked to the brand, broken down, repackaged, then sent out via truck to all the dealers. And 12 months after we saw the catalog and made our initial orders, we get the products in our store and uh, make them available for sale to you. Where I think this is radically going to change in the future is once again techniques like 3D printing and other automated manufacturing techniques. Um, you know, the primary advantage that Asian manufacturers have over uh, US based manufacturers is the cost of labor and a skill set around cutting and sew operations. Um, they just have better construction techniques. Our manufacturing capabilities in the US, in terms of cut and sew, are very primitive compared to what they can do over there. Um, but things like computerized uh, milling machines, um, computerized cutting machines, um, computerized welding like uh, RF frequency welding machines and 3D printing, that can all be done just as effectively and efficiently here in the U.S. as it can overseas. And so one of the things I think is going to happen is the, the production process is going to happen closer to where the product is purchased and, and used. Um, just because that's way too inefficient to do it that way. And I think it's going to happen you know, sooner than later, knowing that uh, uh, the acceleration of change is, is happening. One of the brands that's really jumped on this uh, 3D printing uh, technology shift is Nike. And they brought a lot of products to market this year uh, that uh, were printed using, or, or made using these 3D printing methods from footwear to uh, shoulder pads to uh, to duffel bags and so I think that is absolutely where the future is going and it's going to be interesting to see how the products change in the very near future uh, in the outdoor space. I expect to see 3D printed uh, uh, products very soon. What do I think that's going to mean is that we're going to get kind of a disintermediation. We're already seeing disintermediation in the sales channel with uh, several brands not only launching uh, direct-to-consumer sales efforts, but sometimes, like in the case of Golight, saying we're no longer going to sell through a dealer, we're just going to sell direct-to-consumer. And other brands are have now announced that they're going to do that, Mont Bell being one of them that just contacted us and said, hey, starting next spring, no more internet sales. You can only sell at retail. All internet sales need to be done through Mont Bell's website, and I believe they're also going to allow uh, sales transactions to happen via Amazon. But even that model may get disrupted in the future, especially if 3D printing and other manufacturing capabilities come down to uh, being readily available in the house. Um, right now I'm kind of following the 3D printing space, if you haven't guessed. Um, I can go on to a, a website and choose from a library of you know, three-dimensional drawings, download them, and just print them as I need them. And uh, the library is expanding very, very rapidly. And the capabilities of 3D printing devices 
are expanding exponentially or logarithmically year over year. You're getting much finer uh, output with uh, a broader range of materials that you can print out of. I uh, just saw a guy who printed a castle in his backyard out of concrete. So we're going to see this really make a lot of changes. I'm trying to figure out how it's going to impact you know, our website like Prolight Gear if uh, users no longer need to buy stuff through an e-commerce business. Um, they're either going to buy it directly from the manufacturer or they're going to download it and print it on their own. So lots of things to think about, but I thought it was very interesting to think about. And I think if you look back at even in the last 10 years since I uh, started Prolight Gear, the dramatic changes in technology, not only from uh, the material advances, but the construction techniques that are being used. If you look at products that we were selling 10 years ago, they look absolutely archaic compared to what we're selling today. So I found the whole subject fascinating. I thought it was an interesting conversation to have, and I thought I'd share it with you. Um, as always, thank you for subscribing to our channel, and uh, thank you for watching and sharing our videos.